folks, uh, I just want to talk about the atheist uh, default position. Um, the atheist default position, just just in case there are people who don't know fully uh, the situation about that, is basically the atheist default position is that they do feel that they don't have to provide any evidence for their position. That uh, it's on the onus of the Christian to provide evidence for their God. And the argument goes something like, well, you wouldn't want us to provide evidence for Santa Claus or f tooth fairies. Um, you know, the onus is on you uh, to provide evidence for Santa Claus or tooth fairies if you make the statement that they exist. The problem with this default position is uh, what I would call um, the categor the categorization shift and what they're trying to do the atheist is to try to uh, categorize the Christian God uh, with things that are just silly and stupid such as tooth fairies or Santa Claus and by associating the debate with these kind of things in their eyes they're stripping the discussion of a Christian God of its value and importance so I would say that the default position actually um, lowers and brings down uh, philosophical, theological and scientific discussion. It doesn't actually uh, bring things to a higher level. Uh, the reason being is because the Christian God, whether he exists or does not exist, is not the same as two theories or Santa Claus. He is a God, whether he exists or does not exist, has had a powerful impact on Western uh, philosophical, scientific and uh, cultural development. And so purely on that basis alone uh, it requires the opponents of Christianity to take it much more seriously than they actually do. So to categorize Christianity, the Christian God uh, from a Santa Claus and fairy tale perspective is really to emasculate uh, the Western philosophical tradition. It's as simple as that. And it's not worthy of rebuttal. But on another point, the shift uh, that atheists have done with the default position also uh, shifts from the fact that there are certain existential issues and questions that the Christian God and reflection on the Christian God actually answers and shows the deep seated reality of Christianity embedded within reality and the, the default position does not take this into consideration. It assumes that the Christian God is just a figment of imagination and has nothing to do with the reality of the universe and the existential issues of that reality. For example we are relational creatures and the pontification of the Christian God who is a Trinitarian relational God actually helps us to understand this reality of who we are as human beings that we are relational creatures so that is one area where Christianity helps us to understand who we are as human beings and provides a basis for what it is to be a relational human being the default position would castrate any kind of reflection about those existential questions that are embedded within reality and embedded within the nature of the Christian God and would answer those realities within reality. So I would say that 
the default position is a very cheap way of dealing with theological and philosophical issues I think it would be better for the atheist to actually engage with honest open debate and say what they actually feel about the Christian position and to give the evidences and um, whatever proofs they, they feel they have on the table and to just have it out with Christians on an evidential basis rather than just hide behind this default position um, like I said uh, no atheist has, has really given us a definition of this default position of where it came from uh, uh, sort of defined where this, uh, this default position came from and why it's been chosen above any other definition of atheism uh, every atheist is hidden from this never once has any atheist actually dared to say what other definitions of atheism are around or have been around in history and why this definition has been chosen and where this definition came from no atheist has ever bothered to actually engage in those kind of arguments could it possibly be that that definition probably came from Anthony Flew who actually became some kind of deist and moved away from his atheism I don't know but no atheist has ever dared yet to tell me where that definition has come from and why that definition has been chosen as opposed to other definitions of atheism and the reason I think ultimately why that is the case is because they know that they've chosen it that position for very very theological and philosophical political reasons because they feel that it protects them from criticism of their own position protects them from the fact that they have no evidence themselves and protects them in that they can then go on the attack rather than actually have their own position scrutinized and critiqued just my thoughts from our perspective as Christians we need to provide evidence for the Christian faith but I think we shouldn't let these atheists off on the default position I think we should pursue them and ask them some real tough questions that they need to answer one question is why do you follow atheism when if you do it means that human beings have no ultimate meaning in life that's one question that they need to answer why if atheism is only defined as a lack of evidence in belief in God why did they spend all their time attacking Christianity 